We're joined now in the studio by uh, the chief executive of Quadrilla, Francis Egan. Good morning. Good morning. So what stage are you at now? You're waiting for the announcement. We're expecting it at 9.30. What will happen once the announcement comes? Say, say it's a go. Well, there will be a period where we have to sort out some planning conditions that usually come with these things with the county council, uh, and that typically takes several weeks. So there will be no activity on site for, for a while. Uh, we'd expect we'd be constructing the site towards the end of the year, drilling in the first half of next year, and probably fracking and testing the wells in the second half of next year. And what amount of land will be affected, will be fracked upon? Well, the, the site at the surface is not very large. It's about two hectares or about two, two rugby pitches worth. So most of it's actually happening underneath the ground. The shale itself is very deep, almost two miles under the ground. So we drill down and then we can drill horizontally for one and a half kilometres, but you won't see any of that at the surface. And the, the hole that we're drilling is about eight and a half inches in diameter. So it's very small scale. If it gets the go ahead, why is it OK for the views of local people to be ignored? Well, I don't think they are. Um, clearly, there are people ag uh, against it, and I'm sure you'll be talking to some of those in the course of the programme. But equally, you can find plenty of people uh, in Blackpool and in Lancashire who are in favour of it. Plenty but of if you look at the, the local councils, yep. and you talk to the individuals who live closest, in fact, I think we can, we can hear, from, uh, yeah, we'll hear from two of them now. I think this is uh, Elizabeth and Barry who we've spoken to. Let's have a listen to this clip. It's going to wreck their lives and the lives of people who use this area as an amenity. This is Blackpool's backyard. It should be safe. What do you say to people who, who are still of that mindset today as the decision is about to happen? Well, I mean, clearly they're, they're concerned about it, but, uh, but it is safe. I mean, it has been assessed extraordinarily thoroughly by the Environment Agency and by the Health and Safety Executive. And not only has it been assessed, but the monitoring that's going to go on around these sites uh, is unprecedented. You know, we will monitor everything, uh, traffic, noise, lighting, air quality, water quality, etc., etc. So, so they really can feel uh, assured. I understand that it is, it's like a construction site, but it's temporary. And when it goes away, you won't know it's, anything is there. I'll tell you what people worry about. They look to the United States, yeah. where fracking takes place, right? And there has been um, contaminated drinking water. You mentioned water, the incidents of contaminated drinking water, um, families sick with air pollution. And what people perhaps are thinking here is, we don't need to risk our families, put our families at risk with this. How can you be absolutely sure that these aren't linked? Well, we're not putting anything into the ground that can contaminate drinking water. In fact, you mentioned the United States. There's not one single case in the United States of a public water supply being contaminated by fracking. Not, not one. Private water supply? Private water supply where people drill wells in their back garden. There are uh, instances where methane which is existing in groundwater, has got into the, the wells. But there is a great big debate whether that's anything to do with fracking or whether it's naturally occurring methane. But, at the f but in, in the UK, 99.5% of us get our water from a public water supply. There is not, not a chance, frankly, of getting water contaminated. Uh, talk to us about what your plans will be longer term, because in this case today we're talking about two sites, aren't we? Yes. But that's not your plan. You're an enormous... Uh, international corporation, aren't you? No, you, you, <laughs> frankly, we're a, we're well, a British startup. <laughs> well, OK, but relative to... to the, I mean, the, you, your plans don't rely on two, do they? Oh, clearly not. No, we're not. What, we're, we've 20, never... 200, 2,000 in the UK? How many of these sites will there be? Well... Uh, you're quite correct. These are exploration sites, and the purpose of these sites is to determine whether or not the gas can be extracted commercially. If it can, then there, there will be plans for further sites. But you need to make Give a distinction... Give us an estimate of how, how, how people will be concerned about. What, what's the scale of what you're planning? Well, we, we're not planning at the moment, because until we get commercial flow rates, we, we don't know, frankly, what okay, rate will flow at. But there could be, we have said in the past, across the whole of Lancashire, approximately 100 sites... And when and, uh, and at any one time, only a few of those would be in development. So the difference between development site and production site is quite major. A production gas site, you will not know it's there. How much money are you going to make? I have no idea. How much money are you estimating to make? Because I'm looking at a figure, £50 million in 18 months. That's how much money we're going to spend, not make. So we, if we, if we uh, get the go-ahead today, we will be putting tens of millions of pounds into life. Okay, so what profit margin are you looking at then? What return are you looking at? The reason I ask is if people in Lancashire are so upset with the initial two sides, what are you going to give back to the community? Because you're going to make a lot of money from this if it's successful, well, we, which is what you're planning it, it to be. Well, we're in business. We're in business to make money. We will pay taxes. We will pay workers. We're a British company. We're not a multinational and company. And you'll make we're profit based in and you'll be in an environment and in a community which isn't happy about this. So 
how are you going to ease the relationship? Well, we will we will employ people in the community. We're based in Lancashire. We're not we're not some company coming in from the outside. We're, after this, I'm going to Preston. That's where our office is. We will employ people in Lancashire. We will make commitments to community funds. We were promised percentages of revenue, for, even for each of these exploration sites. We were putting £100,000 per well, £400,000 per site into local community funds. Can I just ask, one, one of the things people would want from you mm. is guarantees. You talked about safety earlier on, mm. that people will be aware that uh, the earthquakes mm. that were caused previously, those, that, was your, that was your drilling, wasn't it? It caused that, that situation. Can you give a guarantee sitting here now to those people who live near these sites that will not happen again? Yes, because, because the, the Department of uh, Energy, renamed now, requires us to put seismic monitoring around the sites. We will have 80 seismic monitoring points. And if it gets near a 0 0.5 on the Richter scale, which is probably equivalent to your coffee cup shaking on the table, if that, then we have to shut down. Any any quake at all? Any zero point five on the Richter scale, which is, you know, a, a truck going past your house is more than that. We come and talk to us again once the decision. I'm uh, very happy through. to do that. Thank you very Thank much you. for coming, Thank in. You. Francis Egan. Thank, Thank you. you.